am an ESL teacher, and I learn about students through their stories. I work with students from diverse cultures from around the world, and they teach me about their beliefs, values, and attitudes. There's not just one immigrant story, there's so many, and that's why we need immigrant literature. At the beginning of each semester, all I have is a roster with unfamiliar names. So we do introductions, and the students tell me their names, the country that they're from, and something interesting about them, something that they like, such as playing soccer or dancing or gardening, for example. I am a story facilitator, and I like to ask a lot of questions. The students work in small groups and also in partners, and they become real to me through their stories. They also become real to each other. They become characters in their own stories, and they become characters in each other's stories. The students have become my mentors, and it takes time to develop those relationships and cultivate them. Sometimes we continue the conversation outside of class. Natalie Goldberg in Wild Mind says, be specific, not car, but Cadillac. She also says that handwriting is connected to the movement of the heart. So think about that next time you're writing, that the movements are actually connected to your heart. We use mentor texts in class to give us examples of good writing. But mentor texts can be so much more than that. They can actually teach us how to live. There are characters in the mentor text that can become our mentors. We also use descriptive writing using our five senses. And I like to ask the students, what did you see? What did you hear? What did you taste? What did you smell? And what did you touch? The students share their stories with a partner. These days, it's so easy to tell our stories. My students use Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, WordPress blogs, and even digital stories. I'm very lucky to teach ESL in that I could learn about culture from my students but there's another way that I'd like to talk about. Mentor texts teach us how to write, but the characters within them can become our mentors. One of my favorite mentors is Eilish Lacey from the book Brooklyn. John Truby says character is the heart of the story and that story structure is the skeleton. Azar Nafisi urges us to read fiction. It's a world that runs parallel to the real one, whose occupants need no passports or documentation. Azar says that fiction is her true home. The House on Mango Street, The Book of Unknown Americans, and Inside Out and Back Again are examples of books they can help us develop compassion for the characters and for each other. Esperanza is a character in the house on Mango Street, and that means hope. Maribel is a character in the Book of Unknown Americans, and she has come to America to heal herself and her family. Ha is a character in Inside Out and Back Again, and she was escaping the fall of Saigon. These books help us with our American identity, and as I said, they help us to develop compassion. Bill Clinton talks about a very old story from the first families and clans, and he recently told us and urged us to avoid an us against them mentality. We all have to live together. 
There's a wonderful picture book called The Arrival by Sean Tan, and it helps us to see the points of view of others. It helps us develop our perspective. We can walk in our mentor's shoes, in the character's shoes. In this case, there are no words. It's only a picture book, but it helps us to see how people can feel like outsiders in our society. There's five books that have helped me with my cultural competency in different ways. Uh, the first one is Hotel on the Corner of Bitter and Sweet. The main character is Henry Lee, who is a Chinese American who meets a wonderful Japanese American. Unfortunately, this is during World War II and the Japanese internment camps, and he loses his best friend to one of these camps. Henry helped me to see uh, the value of second chances and second acts. The book is rich with visual images of what Henry finds in an abandoned hotel called the Panama Hotel in Seattle. Yolanda Garcia, in How the Garcia Girls Lost Their Accents, helped me as an ESL teacher to understand the difficulty of learning a language. The book is, is rich with Spanish references and, uh, and it helped me to learn a little bit about the Dominican culture. Gogol Ganguly is one of my favorite characters and uh, the namesake is a movie as well as a book. So Gogol is torn between two worlds, the old world and the new world. And also he realizes that you can never really understand the responsibilities of your parents until you have to live through it yourself. The book has a lot of food references um, and I feel like it's the intersection between Indian food and American food. Uh, there's one scene where Ashima, Gogol's mother, tries to recreate a food that she remembers from um, the streets of Calcutta, and she uses Rice Krispies and Planters Peanuts to create this snack. Ifemelu from Americana, she helped me to understand race just a little bit more through her honest eyes. She's, she's a very interesting character who's going to school in Princeton. And Princeton's a place that I know well since I used to live around there, and I walk the same streets that she did. Um, Ifemelu says that the streets of Princeton have no smell at all, unlike other American cities such as Brooklyn or Philadelphia. Eilish Lacey is probably most familiar to my own ancestors. Uh, she took a journey from Ireland to Brooklyn, and Brooklyn is where uh, my father and, uh, and grandparents are from. Uh, Eilish is uh, one of my favorite mentors, really, and um, there's a lot of really wonderful references in the book to clothing, so a lot of tactile references. And uh, she's always trying to find the right outfit for her new American identity for each occasion. Um, also, it's a book about leaving home and going back home and making really impossible decisions. Reading immigrant literature and learning culture from its characters, to me, is a lifelong learning opportunity. And there's many ways that we can, uh, we can do this. I think we can join book clubs, such as those found on Goodreads. We can read to our children uh, immigrant literature at a very young age, even use picture books, such as the Sean Tan book, The Arrival. For older children, uh, we can read to each other. I used to do that with my daughter. We can also annotate books using flags and post-its and highlighters and then we can share our annotations with another. We can go to uh, book conventions and we can meet the authors and we can discuss the characters with them and that's something that I've done myself which is really a lot of fun. Uh, we can also watch the movies. So you can watch the movies such as Brooklyn and The Namesake which I think adds to the experience. Immigrants as well as characters from books have family and friends just like we do and we are connected via a web and we help to define each other. We can become characters in our own story. 
So I want you to think, who are the characters in your story and how are you connected to them? I urge you to ask them, what did they see? What did they hear? What did they taste? What did they smell? And what did they touch? To learn more about the characters we talked about, I recommend that you read immigrant literature. And please carry the characters in your hearts so that you can recognize them in everyone that you meet. Thank you.